Welcome back to Believe in Colts. I'm Lawrence Owen. With me, as usual, is my guy, Gerard Powers. And Gerard, oh my goodness, training camp starts tomorrow. How excited are you about this season? I'm excited, man. Just, uh, I, I mean, I'm a big believer in the best time of the year is, is right around this time. You know, getting ready for school to start. Football is about to start all across America. Everybody's about to be on the same type. Uh, I guess, sports schedule. Uh, but it's always exciting, uh, especially when you hear training camp, everybody's reporting, uh, just to get things back going. I think the NFL did a good job in staying relevant for 365 days with all the different storylines in the off season. So now we can just get back to focusing on football. And uh, it's it's always fun. It's fun, man. I can't wait. Absolutely. Um, I can't wait either. I got tickets to go. Uh, I got my media um uh, passes to, to go in and do that as well. Uh, it, it'll be nice, uh, with the fact that the, the players now will be able to interact with, you know, the, the fans yeah. along the sidelines and stuff rather than just sit like 20 feet away and then sign footballs and throw it to them. You know I mean? That was interaction at least, but it wasn't, you know, the same as right up on you signing stuff and saying mm -hmm. hi and taking pictures and things of that nature. So that's, that's really fun too. Uh, before we get started, I just want everybody to know that over on bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports contests and events with first to market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, eSports, even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information from live in-game betting, props, and futures. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50. That's B L E A V 5 0. Yes, that's changed apparently. To receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit, bet online where the game starts. So, you're talking about, we was talking about earlier before we got on that, you know, this is, this is that where the season starts for players, right? This is, mm -hmm. this is something where you feel like everything, everything starts to change. Um, as you, when you were a player and you, you start knowing that training camp is like this week, do, did you, do you start getting uh, a little bit anxious or, you know, how, how do you feel as, as this time rolls around? Man, to be honest, as a player, I think uh, like a couple weeks leading up to the actual day of reporting, you're kind of trying to get everything settled in with your family, trying to, you know, get that last minute vacation in, that last minute of just, spending time with the family on a, a, a free schedule, um, you mm -hmm. know, because everybody knows once training camp starts, um, every everything that comes with football comes first, family comes second, literally. Uh, I mean, that's your job. But it, it's always an exciting feeling just because it's um, it's the start of a new season for one, and then it's, it's time to put all the old stuff that happened last year behind you. And uh, people tend to forget about everything that happens last year when the new season comes along. So... Um, you know, just listening to some of the interviews of the guys that's reporting today, you hear everybody saying, you know, last year's behind us. They're they're ready to just move forward, uh, get a, get 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 going with this season, and um, you know, being ready to to accept new challenges and all those things. But as a player, it's always fun to start a new year, uh, just because it's like another clean slate. Uh, everything that happened in the past, anything that happened before, um, it like I said, you get an opportunity to start day one with the coaches, with everybody to kind of give that impression that you're ready to go and everything. So it's an exciting feeling just because you want to start start the year off right and uh, everybody wants to have a great a great camp uh, heading into the season. But uh, it's always an exciting feeling. How difficult is it to, e even though it's been, you know, six, seven months since, you know, the, the nasty way that a season ends, uh, especially – the way it ended for the Indianapolis Colts last year where they were, you know, 90% sure they were going to make the playoffs and then lose two straight in the way that they did. How difficult is it to 
put that behind you even six months later uh, trying to walk in and start the season fresh? It's, it's really hard to start the offseason when you start your offseason. So as soon as that season is over with and you're getting into your offseason, it's kind of hard to put, you know, that that bad taste in your mouth, you know, out of your mind or, or whatever the case may be. Um, I think but every professional knows, every coach knows when you start a new year, it's a different team. You know, everybody that was on that team last year is not on this team this year. Uh, so you look at it like that's why I say you look at it like a new slate. You look at it like a a fresh start just because you got new faces that weren't involved in that Jacksonville debacle that happened at the end of the year and they don't know anything about it. They just heard stories or whatnot. So uh, once the season started, and once these guys uh, report today, I'm pretty sure that won't even be mentioned uh, in the building or within the team just because it's a new team, new faces, new identity, new quarterback, new pass. Like it's, it's just so many new faces that you know, you're trying to start this thing off fresh, and that's exactly what it is, a fresh start. Good, good. Um, now, I assume it's it's much better to come off a, a, a successful season, you know, where you don't have – do you actually – when you have a successful season, do, do you have to – is it just as important to put that behind you as well as it when you yeah. have a, a failure one? No, definitely. Uh, I remember my rookie year, we go to the Super Bowl. You know, we went 14 straight, go to the Super Bowl, uh, lose the Super Bowl. Of course, that's a bad feeling, but just totally for totally from the season. I mean, we had a great year, uh, mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of accomplishments, a lot of guys broke some records and all that. And I remember going into the building as a second year player thinking it was going to be Oh, this is going to be easy again. I mean, I'm pretty sure we get it. We got everybody coming back. I'm pretty sure we'll win 14 more. And uh, we barely made the playoffs that year. I think we went 10 and six, got the wild card, uh, end up losing first round in the playoffs. But you got to forget everything that happened the year before. My third year, we go three and 13 or whatever it was when everybody got fired. Uh, so we going into the off season and literally everybody forgot about it. Luck comes in, you know, in the very next year we go 12 and four or 11 and five, whatever the record was that year. So things from year to year in the NFL, it changes, man. Uh, I know you got your a couple teams that, you know, consistently bad every year, but normally your good teams, you might have an up and down type, you know, year to where you might not be as good as you was the year before, but the focus, the drive, the motivation, uh, the core values, all those things are still in place because you have your core guys. Uh, and that's why you see a team like, let's just say the Pittsburgh Steelers, even though I know us Colt fans, we don't like those guys too much, but you can see those guys have a year to where it might be a down year for the Steelers standpoint, for the Steelers standard, and then the very next year they're back at the top or whatever the case may be. And it's the same thing with us. Um, you know, we got a standard here in Indy, you know, with how we play and uh, expectation and all those things. So last year, of course, the fan base and everybody knows that's not how we wanted to end the year or, or those things. But I think going into this year, our expectations and standards are still high. So uh, we expect those standards to be met. Uh, walking into training camp the day that you come in to report, uh, what's that day like? How what kind of what kind of stuff does a player go through their their, their opening walking in? Is is there like all new stuff that they got to get uh, uh, situated and, and who do they report to? That kind of stuff. I'm just curious uh, no, from a player you. standpoint. It's almost like first day of school uh, type of thing. You know, uh, I mean, of course, you go through your off season workouts, the, the OTAs, the mini camps and all that. But literally everybody is not in the building at one time together. And this is the first time where you know everybody's going to be there. So you're excited to see some guys that you haven't saw, you know, in a few months. You're excited to see some coaches you haven't saw in a few months. And uh, you're excited to get going. But um, as a player, the first thing you do uh, when you get to training camp is you're trying to get your room situated to where you know you're going to be comfortable. You're trying to get as comfortable as possible just because you know you're going to be in this room, in this dorm, or in this area for the next month. Uh, you're just going to see the same guys, the same people, the same training staff. You know, you're going to see the same people over and over and over. You're going to get lost with the day. You're not going to know what day it is. Um, and you're just going to be on this itinerary schedule, you know, from the time you wake up until the time you go to sleep. So the main thing you're trying to do is get everything 
that you can possibly get situated as far as where you're staying, the room, whether it's hotel or whatever the case may be. You're trying to get as comfortable as possible uh, just because you know you, you're locked in now. You know that you got to focus on certain things and you're trying to eliminate all distractions uh, as possible. I don't think training camp uh, in today's world is as bad as it was, you know, in the past. Yeah, practices can be tough. Uh, here and there, but there's not two a days anymore. So guys know it's just going to be one big practice so people can deal with it. Uh, but it's fun, man. It's it's uh, it's it's one of those times that, you know, this is the, the one month that we have to do what we have to do to get, you know, ready for that week one. And that's what everybody's preparing for, just trying to get ready for for week one of the season. Yeah, you were talking about the two a days and I was just watching the man to man pod yesterday and uh, he was talking about over in New England where, you know, if you made it through all of training camp without missing any time, including, you know, the extra two-a-days of stuff, you would get an Ironman t-shirt at the end of the uh, training camp mm -hmm. kind of as a reward, and people would wear that as kind of a uh, a badge of honor. Did the mm -hmm. Colts have anything like that as well? Any kind no, of badge of honor type stuff? So, so when I was there, uh, my four years there under uh, Jim Caldwell, you know, who come from the Dungy family, mm -hmm. and uh, they say Dungy was the exact same, uh, they, they were good at taking care of their guys. So, you know, they will make a guy sit out of practice or, or make a guy that might, might want to practice sit out just to reserve and just not to put, you know, any extra wear and tear on your body. Um, you know, so they were real good at, at, at seeing what they needed and uh, making sure certain guys were was always fresh. I mean, you got your your Reggie Waynes, your Paytons, and all those guys that no matter what, they weren't going to miss any practice. But if a coach came to me, a GM came to me and was just like, hey, JP, uh, you don't got to practice Tuesday. We're going to let you sit this one out. Got to make sure everything fresh. I was the type that I wasn't going to argue with them. You're going to give me a day off. I'm going to take that day off. Um, but, um, I mean – when I was, like I said, when I was there, you know, coaches and the, the, the staff, front office staff, they were good about just trying to take care of certain players. Um, Cause the, the main, the main thing, just like the other team, you don't want to get hit with the injury bug uh, at all, you know, especially in, in a time to where the season hasn't even gotten here yet. So in training camp, a lot of people try to be careful with certain players and making sure that we can keep certain guys healthy as possible. Uh, just so when we get to week one, everybody's 100% healthy and 100% ready to go. That's interesting that you bring that up. So um, earlier this offseason, uh, Frank was talking about – Frank Reich, uh, mm -hmm. coach, we'll, we'll make that yeah, easy. Um, he, <laughs> he He's earned that title. He deserves that title. I might as well give him that title when I speak about him. <laughs> um, yeah. So – Coach was talking about how they are going to be practicing this offseason 100% full tilt go. Um, I'm just curious your thought process on this. You're just talking about, you know, certain players taking it easy or, or you know, taking a little bit of time off so that they don't get hurt. Where's the balance there uh, between, you know, not really putting uh, full throttle and end up possibly, you know, getting injuries as opposed to going full throttle for practices, maybe getting, you know, uh, a little bit of wear and tear there, but what's the benefits of going full throttle as, 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 as to not. Oh, no, you have to go full throttle. He's right in that. Uh, when I say taking care of players, there's certain players that might be dealing with certain type injuries, still certain type all season surgeries or certain or whatever the case may be to where, you know, that, you know what, like, for instance, let's just say Darius Leonard. There's nothing Darius Leonard can do in training camp that's going to shock anybody in the front office. They know exactly what they're getting with him. They know exactly what he can do, what he can't do. So their main thing with Darius would be like, yeah, we want Darius to practice 100%. Don't get me wrong, but we got a plan for Darius on certain days. It's a it's an off day for him. Like, we got to make sure guys are taken care of. But the gist of the practice or the the entire thing every day is going to be 100 percent full throttle because that's how uh, the season is you know you don't, you don't play a game to where it's 75 percent uh full speed or whatever the case may be so every practice is 100 percent full speed 100 percent full tilt um you know coaches giving it their all players giving it their all but there are certain guys 
within the team that you know that's going to be on the 53-man roster and that you know we have to have healthy uh, that you're going to take care of or have a plan. And that's just not something that they might wake up and just be like, hey, I think Darius need a day off. This is all going to be scripted and ready to go from the start. Uh, they probably already got all, all the guys' um, reps and who's doing what already scripted on paper so it's not like it's a day-to-day -day deal you know it's a plan for everybody but he's right I mean you got to practice 100 percent full tilt because that's the only way you can get ready to play in a, in a regular season game and everybody knows you know if you've been to an NFL game before everybody knows how fast how physical and just you know how these guys uh prepare to, to in order to play a game so you have to practice that way as well so last year well for the most part, the Colts have been run been pretty good at doing joint practices for their last, mm -hmm. you know, week of of training camp heading into preseason. This year's no exception. Last year was no exception. Now, last year, uh, our joint practice, I, I was there. I remember that first joint practice, and there was some hitting going on right uh, between the two teams on their offense and defense when they were running the scrimmages and stuff of that nature, and and. Uh, a few scruffles happened and I remember uh, Jonathan Taylor started running the ball. Like he, he had this look on his face all of a sudden, like halfway through the practice, like something changed. Right. And he started running hard, like knocking people down, not running them over. Like he was in a game and some fights started to break out. Come to find out apparently the other team, uh, was was hitting a little harder than they expected, and then Jonathan Taylor took exception and said, "Well, if they want to get, if they want to, you know, play full physical, like I'll give them full physical." Uh, <laughs> so, does, is that a, a a common occurrence? I mean, did you run much joint practices when you were with the Colts? Uh, no, that it, it wasn't. I don't even think it was a thing uh, when I was with the Colts. But um, I've been in, I've been a part of some uh elsewhere but the thing with the joint practices is both teams before the practice start uh when they're in their own individual meeting on their own team meetings uh there's a certain i guess etiquette that coaches try to let the players know like hey you know we're thudding we're not taking nobody to the ground yes it's full of throttle but we're not trying to get anybody hurt over there they're not trying mm -hmm. to get anybody hurt over here but when you practice with your own selves when you practice with your own team and let's say it's you know, it's been three weeks of training camp. And like you said, it's the last preseason one and we're doing a joint practice. Sometimes guys are just excited to go against somebody else, you know, rather than seeing their, their, their the same people they've been going against. So it gets a little intense, gets a little, um, you know, guys are just, just excited to, like I said, compete against somebody else. And the fights and stuff, that's expected. I mean, you go to any joint practice around the NFL at some point during that day, going to be a couple fights whether it's one-on-ones with wide receiver dbs whether it's you know um run drills with the o-line d-line whatever the case may be there's going to be fights and all that it's expected just the main thing with with practicing with another team is just getting you kind of in 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 game mode um um you know you can be in, you can be in training camp and just ah oh, we got another day it's wednesday ha oh, we got another <laughs> day but when they say hey the Philadelphia Eagles is coming to town. We got practice Thursday against them. You almost feel like it's a game-like situation, even though it's still a practice format, scripted like a practice and all that. Um, you just you just get excited about going against someone else. Uh, I mean, football is a brotherhood. You're not out there trying to get anybody hurt or anything. But I, I, I'm a Jonathan Taylor type guy. You know, if, if, if coach say that we're going to, you know, be this way and you're not feeling like, you know, the other team is holding up to their end of the stick. Of course, I'm going to run a little harder. I'm going to lower that shoulder a little bit. <laughs> if we fight, we just fight. Um, but at the end of the day, everybody keeps it on the field. And once those practice is over, I mean, those same guys, like I said, it's a big brotherhood, you know, and everybody's just excited, just trying to get ready for the season. Okay, so the way you were talking, oh, it's another Wednesday, it's another practice. Does it get monotonous, and do coaches ever do stuff to try to uh, make things not so monotonous when it comes to, you know, day in, day out, same time, you know, that type of situation? 
Yeah, once you get into the first week of the first week of training camp, always goes by kind of quick because, like I said, everybody's mm-hmm. excited. You know, it's all kind of new. You're trying, you're, you're seeing like on the days what you're going to be doing and all that type of stuff. And then the second week of training camp is when it really starts to get tough. It really starts to like you. You really got to have a strong mentality, a strong mental to kind of get through. Now your body is sore. Now you're feeling a little aches and little bruises here and there. You got to get up early to do certain things and all that. Um, so you get into this like mode of it's another day. It's another day, even though you still got the mindset of I have to get better. I have to get better. You start peeking at that schedule a little bit like, oh, man, week preseason one is two weeks away. All right. Well, just because because once the games start, you you kind of forget that you're still in training camp mode. So even when the preseason games is going, you almost feel like, man, it's, it's cool. Only got three weeks of like training camp practice and we got another game. So they got to take care of us like even a little bit just to you know, like make sure that our bodies are ready to go to uh, to play a game. So until the preseason games start, yeah, you kind of get in that mindset of like, man, here we go, another tackling circuit. Man, here we go, another three-hour practice or whatever the case may be. But a good thing that good coaches do is they might surprise you with an off day. You might be walking the individual. I mean, you might be walking on the field, getting ready to stretch, getting ready to do your thing, and a coach might just blow the whistle like, hey, we got team competition at the bowling alley or something. The whole team loads up, go to the bowling alley, and, you know, it just gives you a – some type of break to where you feel like they're throwing you a bone. So in your head, you're like, all right, tomorrow at practice, I'm going to be ready to go. Just got this extra off day, had some fun with my guys. Now I'm ready to go. Like it's almost like a refresher. So good coaches do that. Uh, But you got some coaches, they just grind it out, man, the entire time, which can be tough. And there's no right or wrong way to go about training camp. Everybody do stuff differently. Some training camps are easy compared to other teams. Some teams are harder compared to other teams. So, um, you know, every coach got their own ways about going and, and how to handle uh, training camp and trying to keep their guys mentally fresh and mentally ready to go. In your experience, it's, it was, you know, uh, the day to day aspect of training camp more difficult than during the season. Yes. Um, during the season, you get you get into your routine. Uh, everybody has their own type of routine. You know, whatever you do on Mondays, whether it's. Hey, every Monday I go in, I get my workout in, I watch film with coach. uh, I I go to the training room, get my body taken care of on Tuesday. I do this with my family. I don't go to the facility. You know, everybody has their own routine uh, during the season uh, to almost try to just keep your sanity, you know, because if you don't have a routine, uh, you can kind of lose your mind with how how the craziness that goes on into an NFL season, because when, when you're a player, you see it from the inside out. Rather, as a fan, you see everything from the outside in. Uh, so you get into your routine. But in training camp, there's no routine. Like, it's it's literally every day is almost the same day, you know, if that makes sense. You know, like yesterday, we were in full pass, three-hour practice. Shoot, tomorrow, we're going to be in full pass, three-hour practice. The next day, we're going to be in full pass, <laughs> three-hour practice. So it's almost like the same thing every day when it comes to training camp. And you just got to mentally grind yourself through it. Um, and once the season get here, it's easier on your body just because, you know, you, you're probably going to be in pads one day out the week. Uh, practices is almost cut in half. You know, you're not out there just, you know, dying on the field. It's more film study. It's more, you know, trying to get your body ready and, and all those other things that come into, you know, helping guys be the best they can on Sunday. Because once the season get here, that's the only day that matter is Sunday, even though the rest of the days matter. Don't get me wrong, but Sunday – I mean, at the end of the day, it's a win-loss lead. That, that's, that's the bottom line. You know, you either win or you lost on Sunday, and everybody wants to win. So leading up to Sunday, everybody's trying to do whatever they can to be the best that they can for Sunday. I'm trying to remember who said this line. Maybe you could help me out. We get paid to practice through the week, and then Sunday is a bonus day. Marvin Someone said <laughs> Yeah, you get paid. You get paid to practice. Sunday should be just fun. You're just letting it mm-hmm. out. So, and uh, you know, I, I talk. I used to talk to Reggie and ask Reggie about questions. I mean, ask Reggie questions about Marvin Harrison all the time. And I think that's where Reggie got a bunch of his regiment from. You know, a lot of stuff that, that he put into his routine and all that came from Marv. Marv was one of those guys that he never missed practice. He never missed a rep. 
Uh, he always practiced hard just because on Sunday, if you practice a certain way or if your week of practice is a certain way, Sundays can literally be easy for you uh, just because you're prepared, you're ready to go. Um, you know, you're only going to get, you know, to be honest, when you're thinking about guys that's playing on Sundays, you go through all those reps during the week at practice and all that. And then on Sunday, let's just say for the offense, you might have, what, 70 plays, you know, 60, 70 something plays. And that's if they're calling your formation, your your group package or whatever. So some guys might only be playing 50 plays a game, some on defense. Let's just say Kenny Moore on defense. Nichols probably play about. 60 plays a game compared to if you're just the outside. Well, let's I'm, I'm, I, I, let me back up. Uh, Kenny does play on the outside during base situations. I, I get that. But if you're just on the outside at corner in the base situations, you play every snap of the game. So if there's 100 reps during the game, as um, far as for the defense, you're probably going to be out there 100 times. Let's just say you're the third corner and you just come in and sub packages. That means out of those 100 reps, you might play 60 plays, 65 plays, you know, just on the sub packaging deal. So that's why everybody say during the week of practice, you got to practice. You got to go hard. You got to prepare yourself uh, for everything uh, during that course of the week, because on Sundays, literally, it should, it should be easy for you. So the Indianapolis Colts made some roster moves on Sunday. Um, could you explain the pup and the active non-football injury list, please? Uh, the pup means the guys that are coming in have some type of injury or something that they're dealing with that they're not physically able to go, like, at the moment right now. Um, you know, we, can, we can just keep talking about him. He recently mm -hmm. had back surgery. So, of course, you know, we're not expecting Darius Leonard to be able to practice, you know, tomorrow at training camp. So if you're not able to practice when, you know, training camp starts – they put you on the PUP list, uh, which means now you have time to, to get healthy. You have time to get healthy uh, to do all those things before the season start. And then uh, the non-active football injury list means you had an injury off campus. You had an injury somewhere else uh, where you were you were not in the Indianapolis Colts um, care, if that makes sense. So you get some guys that might have an injury uh, while they're training back home or whatever the case may be, and uh, you get put on a non non football injury active list, um, you know, for that way. So it can get kind of confusing and all those type things. Like Darius Leonard, I'm not worried about at all. Uh, I think he's going to be fine. I don't think it's going to be such a major deal. Uh, the thing is, when the season gets here. You know, you'll see guys coming off that PUP list uh, before the season starts. If Darius is still on there, I'll be concerned a little bit. But I'm I'm not concerned at all with him right now. I think it's more so of just uh, taking caution and just trying to protect your star. So uh, the pup list, uh, the those guys that are on the pup list can come off at any time. They can come off the very next day. Uh, I'm gonna have to go back and check my thing. I think when you start on a pup list, I think you automatically have to sit out a certain amount of weeks. And I'm not sure how 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 it is. I don't want to say nothing uh, right now, but I want to say it's like a time period that that you have to sit out now, and uh, they have to take you off before a time period as well. Okay. All right. Well, the Colts announced uh, four people went to the pup list that we've already discussed. Darius Leonard. Also, defensive lineman Tyquan Lewis, who who had that uh, uh, knee injury on that interception return, uh, as many of you may remember. Rodney McLeod, the new safety we picked up uh, that came over from Philadelphia. And then second-year wide receiver Michael Strawn is also on the pup list. We I brought up the, non -act, or the active non-football injury list uh, because the rookie Eric Johnson II was placed on that. So um, just wanting everybody to know what's going on. Um, I'm kind of excited. I'm, I'm curious uh, how things are going to go. Now, the Colts generally, you start off in like shells, right? You, you, yeah, don't, first, you don't go. Your, your first three days of practice is going to be some type of helmet and short combination, whether it's uh, normally now if you got on helmet and shorts, uh, even under your pads, they got like special padding uh, that you can put in, but it's still, you know, jersey and shorts, no shoulder pads 
or anything like that. So you'll do the first three days helmet shorts and then that fourth day it might be shorter shoulder pads and shorts and then by that by that fifth day you're you're full pads, you know, full throttle ready to go. That's basically trying to get everybody what uh kind of used to it, get their bodies used to to doing that so that you're not overworking someone. Yeah, those first couple of days, you're trying to really make sure everybody's in shape, ready to go. Um, I mean, you don't want to start that first day of practice in full pads and, you know, all of a sudden you get some injuries popping up and, you know, guys just not ready to go. So those first couple of days is just to make sure everybody's ready to go, acclimated with how the practice regimen is going to be, all that type of stuff. And you build up into the full pads. And once the full pads is on, especially in training camp, you know, it's probably going to be full pads for about three or four days until you get like a break from the pads. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything else you want to want to go over before we end up uh, in this, in this podcast? No, man. Um, I, I word through the grapevine is as uh, far as I was talking to some guys about the wide receiver room. <laughs> And uh, it's a lot of excitement with, with Alec Pearson, man. Um, I, I heard just far as from a mentality standpoint, said the kid's ready to go, um, you know, and uh, I think everybody's excited about him, and it's a huge opportunity uh, ahead of him uh, at the moment. And uh, I'm, I'm just excited to see how that wide receiver room shakes up uh, just because, you know, I think everybody was kind of thinking that Chris was going to bring a vet in the room. And uh, I think me and you talked about it, you know, uh, several podcasts ago how reggie can kind of be the vet in the room mm -hmm. and uh, word on the street is he got a grip on those guys he got those guys that's that's bought in they're ready to go they're listening to every word uh they're really trying to take heed of that room and i'm just excited to see in training camp can those guys really hold their end of the bargain uh and i, I know everybody was talking about ty as a possibility during training camp in case somebody gets hurt or whatever the case may be but i think i think the wide receiver room is going to shock some people this training camp yeah i was i just i've been, been saying this ever since they were talking about hey our wide receiver room's not deep enough you know and and we need to go get a, a vet you we we discussed this i just dropped a tweet yesterday about it right um right. i don't know if you saw it but uh yeah I, if they make a move it won't be until well into training camp and that's because something's happened right because they have faith they Right, Coach and and Ballard have made it very poignant that they have a lot of faith and confidence in this wide receiver room. And they have seen what they can do better than, you know, us current couch GMs and couch coaches, right? So um, right. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that works out. But I, I, I don't see anything. Uh, I don't foresee anything happening, especially anytime soon. Uh, hope, hope that uh, Mr. Alec Pierce, if you're watching, they're listening. Uh, show out, make everyone believe. And Paris Campbell's trying to do the exact same thing, right? He's out there. Hey, this is my time, right? Uh, I'm not getting injured this year. Um, so, and then you know we got a lot of other guys on the team as well, you know, Des Patman and Ashton Doolin and, and quite a few others that are on this team. It's, it's time for these guys to step up. Reggie's that guy. I mean, if there is anyone out there that I can think of that could help a wide receiver get better at route running and get better with their hands, it's that man, right? Uh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. And that's what he's doing. So. We'll see. All right. Well, thanks so much. Uh, sorry for the delay um, for this podcast today. I I had um, a lot of technical issues, you know, no power, no internet uh, over the weekend due to some storms that rolled through. So that's why this is coming out a day late. But thank you all for being patient. Thank you, Gerard, for uh, waiting a day and, and, and making a little bit of time uh, out of your day today to get this done. Thanks so much. And until next time, I'm Lawrence Owen. Uh, that's Gerard Powers, and until next time, as usual, this is Believe in Colts, brought to you by Bet Online. Go Colts! Do you believe? 